And not much of a change in our temperature, 60 still. Uh, we are looking for a change in the weather. It won't be drastic by any means. It will be, though, over the next few days, a lot more like autumn than it has been like summer. So just passing that along. And according to the weather forecast, the next nicest day is Monday. Well, that means when a lot of people are obviously going back to work. Just something to, uh, to warm your weekend, I guess. Well, you know what? Maybe you can go out and do some indoor shopping, something like that. Uh, what did the president used to say, or well, the previous president, uh, in, in the face of disaster, just go out and do some shopping? Well, I know that a lot of women in my life tell me that makes them feel better, at least. Seven minutes after 9 o'clock, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. I wanted to mention uh, see, a caller, a previous caller, was asked about the, the refugee reset, our previous guest about the refugee resettlement program. Uh, if you were just joining us, Bethany Rasmussen joined us in studio, and she is a candidate for Twin Falls City Council. She had an interesting answer, and I think it's probably, I, I've not heard anybody else say this so far who is either in political office or running for political office. She says, if somebody wants to be an American, they really have to pledge allegiance to this country. Isn't that a bit what what Ben Carson, like what Ben Carson was saying a couple of weeks ago when the media got all upset because he said, he would not support a Muslim for president. That was right after he'd been asked a question about Sharia law. And he was saying, what he's trying to say is, if you have a split loyalty and you cannot have a loyalty to the Constitution because you feel that your own Islamic law supersedes that, he would not support you for president. And so Bethany was saying, what we need people to do is essentially stand up and say, I am an American first. That That is a pretty unique concept. Eight minutes now after nine o'clock. Came across this this morning. I've got to share this with you because it does tell us a great deal, I think, about the mindset of people we could be dealing with in this city by the hundreds, if not eventually thousands. This is from Middle East Watch. Uh, the headline, Germany or nothing, demands Syrian migrant threatening to return home. <laughs> then go. A family of Syrian migrants is demanding to be settled in, quote, Germany or nothing, unquote. Refusing to live in any other European country, they have threatened to go back to Syria if they are not settled in Chancellor Merkel's country with its handsome state benefits and open-door policy. Hussam Kabaya told Sky News that he fled Damascus with his wife and two sons, but rejected the idea of being settled anywhere outside Germany. Quote, I go back to my country. It's Germany or nothing, unquote, he, he uh, demanded, adding, quote, I'll go back to my country, of course, unquote. The interview arguably does not sound like the testimony of a refugee desperately seeking a safe haven, but rather of an economic migrant seeking an easy life at the expense of European taxpayers. A Breitbart London analysis, the British public is also split on much of this, we should point out. All throughout Europe they're having problems. A Breitbart London analysis revealed that the BBC is using a disproportionate number of images of children in its migrant crisis coverage while a plurality of Britons do not believe that the United Kingdom should be taking more migrants. In other words, the media is trying to influence public opinion. Do you think that happens in Britain? Well, apparently it does. Do you think it happens in the United States? Do you think it happens in Twin Falls? Do you think that the local newspaper is cheerleading here in Twin Falls for this resettlement program? Of course it is. Of course it is. And, and if you disagree with them, they write nasty editorials about how bigoted you are. As if somehow they're in your minds and they know exactly what you're thinking and they will never address any real security concerns that people have. Do they not believe that you may have some, some legitimate concerns? Is that the problem that's going on here? Ten minutes after nine o'clock. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. They're giving the impression that each and every one of these people who might be coming here, every last one of them, wants to sing Yankee Doodle Dandy. I'm not so sure that that's the case. You're up next. You're on the air on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX. Yeah, good morning, Bill. A good example of that. Times News publisher, editor, and the writers were personally invited to come out last night to hear Sharam. Haiti and the Muslim convert to Christianity tell about the evils of Islam. And, uh, and of course, they didn't show up. Neither has uh, KMVT. And what you're saying about the cheerleading part is just absolutely right. Their dog and pony forum, it was just that. But it did convince a lot of people that all is well, kumbaya, and so forth. But 
Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution says something about invasion, protect us from invasion. So our elected officials need to be reminded, and he pointed out very uh, well last night that we are being invaded, and uh, if not by the jihad terrorists, but by their cultural jihad. And so we need to remind our elected officials, by the way, there were no elected officials there, even though they were all personally invited either. Of course. They seem to know everything about it from the forum. They were all there at the forum, of course, uh, being uh, propagandized about how great this program is. How many, How many? if you sat down and asked uh, how many of your elected officials, also uh, the, the chief staff over at the newspaper, if you asked them to cite Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution, you know, they wouldn't be able to do that. They would. Yeah. Well, it, it's incredible, you know, how the media is so biased and they claim to be, want to be fair and so forth. They've had every opportunity. Pastor Sharon uh, spoke Monday night at the East High Baptist Church about the fact that, you know, uh, Allah and Jehovah of the Bible are not the same thing. They, there's no, and yet yeah. a lot of interfaith churches, you know, are adopting that. And, uh, but of course, no media coverage there, no elected well, officials there either. I, I thank you for the call. And I think what we need to do, and I would recommend this, you know, why, why doesn't your local newspaper's editorial board invite this guy in and have him sit down and do a and a with him? And, and, and I'm sure they feel they could tear him apart, right? So why didn't they do it? Thanks for the call. We have another caller joining us. You're up next. You're on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. What's on your mind? Hello. All right. Somebody else uh, decided to throw in the towel. That does happen periodically. I tend to scare them away. Been doing that most of my life. Brigitte Gabriel, who is uh, the president or the the director of Act for America, she was on the program with us. Gosh, a couple of months ago, a few months ago, back in April, I think it was, because she was doing an appearance in the Boise area. She was in uh, Caldwell, I believe, and she attracted a crowd of about one thousand people. She was speaking, somebody sent me this. Now, I don't know how recent this is. This is a hearing at the Heritage Foundation, and I don't have a date on it, but she's answering a question from a Muslim student who's trying to imply that people are being bigoted and racist in their opposition. Uh, Take a listen to what she has to say. There are 1.2 billion Muslims in the world today. Of course not all of them are radicals. The majority of them are peaceful people. The radicals are estimated to be between 15 to 25 percent according to all intelligence services around the world. That leaves 75% of them peaceful people. But when you look at 15 to 25% of the world Muslim population, you're looking at 180 million to 300 million people dedicated to the destruction of Western civilization. That is as big of the United States. So why should we worry about the radicals, 15 to 25%? Because it is the radicals that kill. Because it is the radicals that behead and massacre. When you look throughout history, when you look at all the lessons of history, most Germans were peaceful. Yet the Nazis drove the agenda. And as a result, 60 million people died. Almost uh, 14 million in concentration camps. 6 million were Jews. The peaceful majority were irrelevant. When you look at Russia, most Russians were peaceful as well. Yet the Russians were able to kill 20 million people. The peaceful majority were irrelevant. When you look at China, for example, most Chinese were peaceful as well. Yet the Chinese were able to kill 70 million people. The peaceful majority were irrelevant. When you look at Japan prior to World War II, most Japanese were peaceful as well. Yet Japan was able to butcher its way across Southeast Asia, killing 12 million people, mostly killed with bayonets and shovels. And it was a bit longer than that, and she ended up getting some raucous applause from the crowd that was listening. 916, I believe we have a, uh, we have a caller with us. You're on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story. You know what? That same guy is uh, getting a little frustrated with me this morning, I know. It's 60, and you're listening to News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Call it 916. Telephone number, if you'd like to reach the program, is 736 300 that is 7360300 she pretty much summed it up you all right so what the majority are peaceful you don't need though many people to create some havoc 
And and this James Clapper, when I read this editorial in the newspaper the other day saying, oh, the vetting process is wonderful and it's perfect, and et cetera, and, you know, it has worked so well. This guy, James Clapper, I mean, he's an intelligence guy. He's been testifying to the contrary for months. For months. This is one of the top intelligence guys this government has had in the last, uh, well, probably this century. What are you smoking over there at the newspaper? You haven't noticed that? You're up next. You're on the air with Bill Colley. Hi. Yes, hello. What's on your mind? Yeah. Hey, uh, well, you know, I'd like to talk a little bit about religion. I'd like to talk about the religious aspect that has <clears throat> seemingly overwhelmed uh, the country in this election and, and just in general lately. And uh, I, I may be a little ignorant to the facts, but I believe this country was founded on the freedom of religion. And it's always kind of been my understanding, and I'm a middle-aged guy, but it's always been my understanding that religion, your religion, uh, and I'm not a religious guy. Um, well, the, the founders basically, that what it says is that we'll make no law establishing a state church. So there's no, unlike England, where they had the Anglican church, there's no state church. States themselves could actually, in, individual states did that. They had their own official churches. The federal government did not. But can we implement can we implement our leadership, at, our political leadership, at a religious level, depending on their religious? Belief? Should everyone have to swear off their religious faith before they take a public office? I guess uh, I don't. I don't think so. If if but someone actually has belief, I don't think that your religious belief or I don't think your religious belief should interfere with your. But, but here's, another, way, here's, form, here's another question. Christianity or otherwise, here's another question. Christianity right. informs me on what's right and wrong. If I believe that I'm answerable to a higher power, will that help control my actions in government and make me a better public servant? I think I think yes. I think that yes. That that's a great question. I think the answer to that question is definitely yes. Because right. uh, uh, a little bit of governing in a human nature is a good thing, you know, and especially towards the good side. Um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm confused, Bill. You know, I, I, I don't know what to think. Well, I like that, what Ben Carson had to say. He doesn't want a Christian theocracy as well. Well, and I think that's a, I think that's a valid point. I really do. Hey, I thank you very much. A lot of the, a lot of the things, though, that we believe are right and wrong, even though our, our, our churches or synagogues teach us these things, we already believe those anyway. Uh, a lot of us already, even, I know people who don't go to church, but they share the same exact beliefs that I have. My father, oh, he was so ticked off about organized religion that he would not go back to church for years. It was only until almost the day he died before he started going again on a regular basis. But when it came to a lot of the important moral issues of the day, he was spot on with not only Billy Graham, uh, but the Pope as well, and a number of other people, in, in, in religious leaders in this country. Even though my dad didn't want anything to do with going and sitting in a building on Sunday morning. And uh, complained it was all about someone taking his money. We've got more coming up on this subject. Wanted to mention a couple of things. The last caller, I think, really struck on something, and it's a good point, and that is, you know, we don't want a theocracy. And Cal Thomas once said it well. Cal Thomas, of course, worked as the spokesman for a long time for the Moral Majority, which was Jerry Falwell's organization that was trying to influence politics. And Thomas said after his tenure there, he realized we shouldn't put our trust in uh, princes, but we also... Uh, shouldn't uh, we? We shouldn't, on the other hand, accept everyone at face value who's telling us, "Vote for me because I'll restore biblical values." And he said, often those people, and I think he was referring not by name but to David Vitter, who was a who was a U.S. senator from Louisiana, who had that sort of approach to his early political career while he was having affairs with all sorts of women. Um, and it just when he was caught, it it, it gave a, a black eye to a lot of Christian politicians who actually do try and live out their faith. Hey, I want to tell you before we get back to the telephones on this topic, I wanted to tell you, and I hope some of our callers can be patient and hold on, uh, but I wanted to tell you about our good friends at Tint Lady. Even though we're, we're, we're going to be out of the hot weather, which I was telling you all summer long is one reason to get window tints is to reduce that convection heat coming through windows in your automobile, your office, or your home. Now you can start thinking more to the point about how that bleaching agent known as the sun impacts, you know, your cloth, uh, your, your drapes, your upholstery, anything in your house like that, your photographs on the wall. And perhaps window tinting could help, uh, window tinting could help pr protect all of those. 
So what we're asking you to do is to give them a call for a free estimate if you've been considering this for a long time. Again, free estimate. It won't cost you anything at least to give somebody a, a call and have them come out and give you a number. You can give them a call at 736-8469. Also, go online at tintladyidaho.com. Located at 1887 Highland Avenue East in Twin Falls. Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And, of course, we like to tell you, don't squint, get tint. I have a caller joining us. It's 923. I'll call it, uh, well, we've got 60, holding steady. You're on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story. Good morning. Like I said earlier, sometimes it requires patience. Uh, I'm not going to give anybody a hard time about the lack thereof because, you know what? We all have character flaws in our lives. And I was asked one time in a job interview to uh, to if I could could uh, outline you know my strengths, and then the guy said to me, caught me completely off guard. He said, "Do you have any you know what you describe as personal character flaws?" And I said, "I have no patience." <laughs> No, I got the job, um, but at least I, uh, I I was honest enough with myself to recognize that. And the reason I knew that was because in my previous job, our regional manager had told me the same thing. So I just took what he told me and blurted it back out. He was right, I should point out. You're up next. You're on the air on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. What's on your mind? Good morning, Bill. You know, I think what uh, people are talking about, the, the elected officials not showing up at the meeting with uh, the pastor last night, uh, Steve Millington talked about it on uh, Tuesday morning, and what we've been all been basically told is, this is going to happen, you need to accept it, so sit down and shut up. Uh, we, we talked, Steve Millington talked about uh, Kevin McCarthy being the next Speaker of the House, and he basically said it was going to happen, and there's nothing we can do about it. And that's not true. You know, we have the First Amendment uh, to, to redress our government with our grievances, and we need to stand up. We can't be the silent majority anymore. We need to stand up. We need to be vocal. We need to take a page out of the liberals' playbook, and we just need to be loud and demand our, our voices be heard. And somebody's going to have to take one for the team, and maybe somebody's going to get arrested out of this. So, but you know what? It's time to quit just you know, going along to get along. You know why Republicans, I think, are, are unwilling, at least in establishment, to do that is because the liberals at least have uh, media on their side. But every time the Republicans, the hearing the other day with Cecile Richards from Planned Parenthood, it, we kept hearing war on women, war on women, war on women, and the media just amplifies that. Uh, the media... Is the is the wild card in all of this? It it, it doubles so, the strength or triples the strength of the of the liberals, and unfortunately, we don't have that on our side. Well, you know, even bad press is still press. I mean, you know, if they're if they're gonna they're, if they're gonna show us in a bad light, at least we'll have other Republicans out there who believe as we do uh, stand up and start and take up the banner and start moving forward with this. We we can't just sit back and say, well, it's going to happen, we're going to, we're going to let it happen, and there's nothing we can do about it anymore. We've got to stand up for what we believe. I thank you much for the call. It goes back to what Ben Carson has been doing. Simply when he was told he needs to resign from his uh, presidential race or he needs to apologize, he said, no. And, uh, and this, he found a way to bypass the media because his poll numbers have skyrocketed, even among Democrats. You're up next. You're on the air on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX. And what's on your mind? Well, Bill, the, the simple thing about this Muslim situation is this. A Muslim, by definition, is someone who follows Islam. And Islam follows the Quran, and the Quran believes that Sharia law should govern the world. Right. And until such time, as the, if indeed 75% of Muslims are peaceful, they need to renounce that Muslim and become something else, because by definition, we can't sort them out. And it isn't our job to do that. We shouldn't take a, we shouldn't put our, our well-being at risk because their game plan, the Muslims' game plan is very plain, and that is to infiltrate and take over. It's almost unfair to them to tell them, look, I understand that they're called, uh, they're called to have a worldwide Sharia government, and they're, they're, they're called to enforce that and to force everyone else into it. It's almost unfair to them to tell them to drop their religious faith. Uh, if you think well, about it, no one would, if you're a Christian, someone came along and said, well, we need you to do that. So I guess if they can't, if they can't reconcile that, then perhaps we need to build a wall and say, all right, enough. Well, until such time as the Quran has changed or that modus operandi, but it's very well established what their motives are and what they believe that their duty 
to their God is, and that is to take over and make everyone live under Sharia law. So it's pretty simple. Until they change, why should we bring that in to harm our country? It will. The religious part of this whole factor, is, as mentioned earlier, is if you allow the Christian to dominate, once the once the Christians are no longer in power, then you'll be that you'll be taken over by the Muslims because of that religious factor. So that's why you can't have any of it. I thank you much for the telephone call and and. Uh, the difference I see, and, and I've heard Pastor Hadian speak before, and I've got some of the DVDs, and, and he makes it quite clear that, you know, in their religion, you die for God. In our religion, and I speak as a Christian, God died for us. But the, the other part of this is, a rich man walked up to Jesus, and he said to him, you know, Master, what do I need to do to follow you? And Jesus said, give up all of your possessions. <laughs> what? Are you kidding? And the guy walked away. But he had the choice. And I think that Jesus was just giving him that to see what he was willing to do, but he walked away. And Jesus didn't say, go grab him and force him to get rid of those possessions. We're going to make him godly whether he likes it or not. Did not happen that way. So there's the difference. 930, Bill Colley with you. We've got to take a short break. Weather finally improving a little bit. 61. Hope you can stick around. I've got more coming up if we get a chance. Uh, Hillary Clinton, my gosh, I don't know how this woman is going to survive the next couple of weeks the way things are going. I don't mean that in a literal sense. Please, somebody's out there right now. Do you know what he just, he just called for eliminating Hillary Clinton? Uh Uh-huh. You know, well, uh, according to the uh, liberal handbook, the ends justify the means, so if they twist your words, it doesn't matter. But that's on the docket, and more of your telephone calls too, obviously. 